Hi, I'm Stuart Harris. Welcome to the amazing skeletal system. The skeleton does many jobs for us. The skeleton provides rigid support for the entire body. Bones provide protection for our vital internal organs. The bones of the cranium or skull and the thorax or chest provide protection for our brain, heart, lungs, liver, pancreas. Bones also provide us with movement. Were it not for the rigid skeletal system against which the muscles pull, we would not be able to move the way we do. Bones provide mineral homeostasis. Homeostasis means balance, and the bone stores calcium and phosphorus. When the body needs those minerals, it pulls it out of the bones. Bones also produce blood. The red bone marrow in the epiphyses of long bones produce red blood cells, white blood cells, and other components of the blood. A sixth function of bones, the medullary cavity is a long cavity in the middle of the shaft or diaphysis of long bones. The medullary cavity produces yellow bone marrow, which is basically fat. So the yellow bone marrow is an energy reserve in times of famine. There are five kinds of bones. There are long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. Long bones are longer than they are wide and include bones such as the humerus or upper arm and the bones of the hand which are called the metacarpals. Short bones are more cubical. They're about as long as they are wide and they include the many carpal bones in the wrist and tarsal bones in the ankle. Flat bones are primarily useful for protection and include the bones of the cranium, which protects the skull, as well as the ribs and sternum, which protect your vital internal organs, such as heart and lung, liver and pancreas. Irregular bones are your vertebrae, or spine bones. Sesamoid bones are bones enclosed in a tendon. The most obvious example of this is the patella, or kneecap. There are also sesamoid bones found in many people's wrists and ankles. Now let's look at the anatomy of a bone. Starting from the outside is the periosteum. The periosteum is a tough, fibrous cover over the entire bone. Inside of the periosteum, we find compact bone, which, as the name suggests, is compact and hard and is what we would normally think of as bone. Inside of the compact bone is the medullary cavity. This cavity is lined with the endosteum. The endosteum produces yellow bone marrow, which is a fat storage source. In addition to yellow bone marrow, long bones produce red bone marrow. This is produced and stored in the spongy bone in the epiphyses of long bone. The red bone marrow produces components of blood, including red blood cells and white blood cells. Now we'll look at the external anatomy of a bone. The shaft of long bones is called the diaphysis. The ends of long bones are called the epiphyses. Epiphyses is plural, epiphysis is singular. A process is a projection off of a bone, and a fossa is a depression into a bone. Often, the fossa is present to accept a process. The most obvious example of this is the olecranon process and olecranon fossa. The olecranon process is a process off the proximal or near end of the ulna of the forearm, and the olecranon fossa is a depression in the humerus. This area is also called the funny bone. The final landmark that we will find on all bones is the foramen. A foramen is a hole through which blood and nerve supply can pass. As we've discussed, bones are living dynamic organs and need blood supply. The largest foramen is called the foramen magnum, 
and is located in the occipital bone at the base of the skull. This is the hole through which the spinal cord passes into the brain. Well, that's the end of Unit 1. Please complete the activities listed below and do the readings in preparation for Unit 2. Thanks a lot!